Did you know? The Simpsons Hit and Run was originally conceived as a direct sequel to Simpsons Road Rage. Road Rage was an homage to Sega's arcade game Crazy Taxi. Sega thought the game was more than an homage, however, and filed a lawsuit against Fox Interactive, Electronic Arts, and Radical Entertainment. When the time came to make a sequel to Road Rage, developers looked for inspiration in another popular game of the era, Grand Theft Auto 3. Associate producer on Hit and Run, Tim Ramage, told Did You Know Gaming, Grand Theft Auto 3 had just come out on console, and everyone was blown away by how deep and immersive that game was. The Simpsons universe was ripe for an expanded, explorative experience, driven by a deeper story and more character interaction. Since Radical had built the foundation of a decent driving game engine with Road Rage, GTA provided a blueprint for expanding the world and creating what would become Simpsons Hit and Run. One of the biggest similarities between GTA 3 and Simpsons Hit and Run was the amount of vehicles the players could commandeer. There are over 70 vehicles throughout the seven levels of the game. Hidden deep within the files of the game itself, users and modders have found additional unused vehicles like an ice cream truck, a blank blue van, and unusually an Audi TT. During a brainstorming session early in the game's development, someone came up with the idea of making the game open world. Executive producer of Hit and Run and Road Rage, John Melacquire, explained, During the meeting, someone said, Why can't we get out of the car and walk around Springfield? Though I don't remember who said it, I do remember looking around the room and seeing everybody's face with the look of, I wish I said that. We spent the next several hours discussing how could we do this with the current engine, and what types of game could we do if we decided to go down this path. When the ability to kick other characters was added to the game, many of the game's creators and playtesters tried it out by having Homer kick Marge. It was such a ridiculous thing to do in the context of the show that everybody seemed drawn to it. They made a rule though, no one could make Homer kick Marge in front of Matt Groening. But as John Melacquire explained, when Matt Groening first tried out the new kicking ability, the first thing he did was beat the crap out of Marge. Literally kicked her down the street from their house to the Quickie Mart. Though the makers of the game knew they had something special with Hit and Run, they assumed the game would receive lower ratings from critics. As Tim Ramage puts it, the team also figured that Hit and Run, regardless of the depth of content and how good the game was, would automatically be docked 1-2 to two points by reviewers because of the franchise's less than stellar history with games. For the game's release outside the United States, it received several edits due to objectionable content. Some examples are a clip of Apu saying, Hey, move it, Whitey! And one clip from the buzzer of the legitimate businessman social club that said, Don't come in here. We're making uh, sausage. Man sausages. Hit Run has many cheats, including ways to bring up different character models and make changes to the way your car controls. By using some of these cheats, players have managed to access restricted areas of the game, uncovering unused game assets and strange glitches. Players can find many misplaced objects by using an unlock all car cheat to get the RC car and a honk to jump cheat to get out of bounds. Levels 1, 4, and 7, you can see variations of the Simpsons house in the middle of nowhere. This is presumably where the house is naturally located and the players would teleport to it. The house has parts missing because the fixed camera limits what the player can see and the missing parts are unnecessary. Characters can also be seen walking around in the out of bounds area, such as Lisa and Apu. Level 1 has two paintings in the Simpsons Simpsons style, based on the work American Gothic. One idea is that they were planned for inside the Stonecutter's tunnel. In the final game, Simpsons styled paintings of Mozart and the Mona Lisa can be seen in the tunnel instead. Users poking around the game's files have found tracks that refer to a land of chalk. One of these tracks is in the mission There's Something About Monty. Though we never see a land of chocolate in Hit and Run, there is a land of chocolate level in the Simpsons game. Interestingly, parts of the Hit and Run track are played in the land of chocolate, despite the Simpsons game releasing four years after Hit and Run and having a different developer and publisher. This could mean that Hit and Run was planned to have a land of chocolate stage or mission as well. There are many Easter eggs in the game. If your system's internal clock is set to either October 31st, the last Thursday of November, or December 25th, the game's main menu will feature a Halloween, Thanksgiving, or Christmas theme. The characters in the game also frequently break the fourth wall, acknowledging that they're in a game. When Homer loses, he shouts, Oh, this video game sucks! This line was later referenced in Crash Tag Team Racing, also made by Radical Entertainment. The line can be heard from Pasadena Opossum after her cart gets destroyed. This game sucks! 
The Simpsons Hit and Run was voiced by the original cast of The Simpsons TV show, and the writers were heavily involved in the game's story. The voice actors recorded almost an entire season's worth of voice work for the game. Each actor voiced over 700 lines, and the writers were on hand to go over every plot point the creators came up with. At times, the creators would even get rewrites from the show's writing staff. John Mellacquire told us, The Simpsons TV team is always involved. They are from the start. They have to be. They improved everything. So for us, it was about getting Gracie Films and Matt on board. We knew we had achieved what we set out to. Then, to hear Matt Groening play the game and laugh, we knew we did right by the show as well. There's a strong modding community for Hit and Run, with multiple mods being published in 2015. The biggest modding project is by Donut Team, which is a complete reworking of the game. It has new levels, new playable characters, and new missions. Don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming for more facts and trivia. If you like this video, give it a like. You can also click the annotation to see the unreleased South Park game that was inspired by Hit and Run. If you're interested in checking out the patchy bearded chubby man-child behind the voice, click our video here about gamer gear. It's a bit of a goof, a spoof, and I hope, a laugh. Thank you so much.